I like them wide and I like them curvy. If there's one thing I learned about using the Super Solid Displays XG340R Ultimate Monitor for the last couple of weeks as my daily driver is that I like curved ultra wide displays and I really want to buy one now except I'm completely dead broke because all my TikTok YouTube pages don't turn a profit because they always flop. So I digress. Let's talk about the XG340R Ultimate from Super Solid Displays. So Super Solid Displays is a local Singaporean company making gaming monitors like Prism Plus and it's Dream Core's answer to Aftershock's Prism Plus. So it's actually very interesting. They're like kind of competing parallel. So this monitor is $700, $750 roughly. It's a curved ultra-wide gaming monitor. It's 144 Hz, has G-Sync. You know, it's curved as well. The curved rating of a 1500R and it's a very interesting option. The question is, is it going to be the right choice for you? Is it going to be worth it for you? All of that will be answered in this video, so stay tuned. So as always, we start off with the design, and the design of this monitor is pretty nice. It's got flair, but it's reasonably nuanced. It's matte black, and it's pretty nice. The only problem I have with it is it's got red LEDs on the back, because it's red. I mean, if it was RGB, I think it would be less annoying, because then you can change the color, but at least you can turn it off, so it's not much of a concern. And even if you don't like the looks of those LED plastic strips, hey, at least uh, you can turn them off or and they're on the back of the monitor. So you're not going to see them pretty much all. Uh, another problem I have with the design is that the monitor is a little bit big. So it's something that you have to take note of before buying this monitor. Because if your table's not big enough, then you're going to need to buy, say, a wall mount or desk mount monitor arm, or you need to get a bigger desk. Both are viable options. Now, assuming your table is big enough, the included stand is actually really, really good. It's well built, metal, solidly built, very sturdy feeling, and has plenty of adjustments. It can adjust up and down in terms of height, and it can tilt up and down. Maybe not as much tilt as you might have in a Valorant game, but plenty of tilt, definitely sufficient amount of tilt angle, that's for sure, enough to get a comfortable ergonomic setup. I would have liked it if I could swivel left and right, but it's not included in the stand, but hey, I adjust and tilt up and down is better than none of that. Now, since we're on the topic of design, at the back of the monitor, you find the I.O. So you've got two DisplayPort port 1.4 ports and HDMI 2.0. It's heavily recommended you use the DisplayPort 1.4 ports because that's how you get variable refresh rate and all the functionality that you actually paid for with this monitor. If you use HDMI 2.0, I think there might be some problems with G-Sync and FreeSync. So the best is just to stick with DisplayPort. It comes with the DisplayPort cable included in the box anyway, so it's clear and very obvious they want you to be using DisplayPort with this monitor to get the full experience, and you should definitely should. On the monitor, you find the controls, nothing special, not particularly easy to use, but also not terrible either. It's, bit, it's still a bit clunky, but it's the same as pretty much any monitor on sale in its price range that's reasonably priced. And on the front, you've got the screen itself. The bezels are nice and thin, there's not much branding, and it looks pretty generally quite okay. So now let's move on from design and actually let's move on to the actual monitor itself and instead of just talking about the panel and certain specs and stuff let's talk about it from different use cases so number one let's talk about gaming but immersive casual gaming where you're trying to enjoy the world of the game or the environment or just trying to enjoy a game and chill out with your homies on discord and just play a fun game this monitor is absolutely excellent i really really love curved ultra wide monitors and the xg340r ultimate has taught me just that. 144 hertz is definitely enough for a casual gamer. It's going to give you nice fast refresh rate that looks very, very good. Now, you can turn on MPRT if you want to lower the motion blur that you get from the screen, but that will prevent you from using variable refresh rate and also will fix the brightness so that it's something that you to keep in mind. If you can't consistently keep your FPS above 144 FPS and above 144 hertz so as to prevent screen tearing, if you can't get consistently very high FPS in whatever game you're playing, turn off MPRT and turn on variable refresh refresh rate because the advantages of variable refresh rate will be higher. However, if your computer is a beast like with the 3090 and stuff and you can constantly get more than 144 FPS and stuff in whatever game you're playing at whatever settings you had set at, well then turn on MPRT because the additional clarity because it strobes the backlight to reduce motion blur, that actually works. It's something that I've tested with the Prism monitor and I've tested with this monitor. It works very, very well of a feature. If you can get consistently high FPS, turn it on because the additional clarity is definitely enjoyable and you don't have to worry about screen tearing anyway because you're getting consistently high FPS. So that's something to keep in mind. So for casual gamers, say you're playing Cyberpunk, Skyrim, Anno, this game, this is awesome. Ultra wide is lovely for immersion and so is a curved display lovely for immersion. The distortion on the edges from the curve really wraps the world around you and makes you feel like you're inside the game, which makes for a very fun experience. It makes it very immersive and really enjoyable. And that's something that we all love when we're a casual game. Oh, you're not trying to be the ultimate, ultimate best you can be at a very competitive game like Counter-Strike or Valorant where having maximum clarity and refresh rate 
is needed. This monitor is excellent because it's immersive and enjoyable and has the other advantages of being an ultra wide monitor alongside just being good for gaming. But if you are someone who's a really sweaty tryhard, you're the, trying to be the next simple, the next scream, you're trying to become a professional, compete in tournaments, this is not the monitor for you and it's pretty obvious. It's a curved ultra wide for one. And also changing aspect ratios, changing from a flat screen to a curved screen, I talked about this before, it's not a good idea if you're a competitive gamer trying to keep your aim as sharp as possible because it will knock everything out of balance and knock everything out of whack. So if you're someone who's trying to be the best player in the world, don't use this monitor that's heavily not recommended. However, if you're someone who is playing these competitive games but you just want to perform decently well and you're worried if you switch to this monitor you won't perform good at all, no, it's it's entirely possible to aim well with a monitor like this. It's just that if you're trying to perform at peak optimum human performance, don't use this monitor. Use something like a sweaty tryhard 240Hz monitor with a TN panel. That will be a better option. Now let's move on to more professional workloads. And honestly, curved ultra wide monitors seem like a perfect fit for curved professional workloads. The ultra wide monitor means you get a lot of extra real estate without having a bezel in the middle being annoying and cutting off your screen. And that fact that it's curved is actually pretty good for ergonomics because this most of the screen will be parallel to your eyes whenever you turn your head. So it's not actually, it's not gonna have as much strain on your eyes as a flat ultra wide monitor where the edges will be kind of far away from you and you'll be looking at them at an angle. Uh, the question is though, is it actually really good for professional workloads in the real world? Now for typing scripts, replying to emails, doing research and having multiple word documents, it is a boon. For doing things like coding, I lent my cousin who is a coder this monitor. He said he loves it and he loves the ultra wide form factor of it and for coding, excellent. For things like video editing, I can assure you having an ultra wide monitor is such a boost. Having the extra real estate, the ability to stretch out your timeline and see your whole timeline at one go as you're editing your video is just something that is genuinely life changing when it comes to editing. Really genuinely makes me tear up a little bit. It's a very good experience for most pro workloads, unless you need color accuracy. The XG340R Ultimate is not a professional monitor. It doesn't claim to be a professional monitor. It claims to be a high-end gaming monitor. Now moving on to a professional workload that actually requires color accuracy, like color grading for professionals, as well as graphic design. This monitor definitely falters and struggles with that. And that's not to say the color on this monitor is bad. The color meter that I tested it with showed me that it delivers on all its color space promises and any sort of magenta green shift was very easily fixed with the color profile. It's definitely enough for using it as a rough guide for color grading if you know how to color grade via scope as your main source of color information when in your color grading process. But if you're an amateur who has no idea how to do that, A, go learn how to color grade using scopes, and B, don't expect to find any monitor that's not by Apple in a reasonable price range that is good for color grading because none of them will be unless you spend a bunch of money. That's just the way color grading monitors are. Get really good color is a really expensive, expensive thing. So to summarize that whole bit about color, it's not a good monitor for color grading unless you're using scopes and just using a monitor as a rough guide. Number two, its color is perfectly fine for anyone who's not doing professional color grading, so no worries there. And number three, if you are color grading and you're not learning how to use scopes, you definitely should learn how to use scopes and you should definitely realize that you can't find a monitor that's good for color grading and good for gaming that is reasonably priced as well. It's like a trifecta. You have to pick two. You can't choose all three and have the holy trinity. It's just the way the world works. Moving on from the color science of this monitor, the viewing angles and the backlight bleed of this monitor is pretty interesting to talk about. The backlight bleed is very nice. It's actually reasonably well controlled, especially for a QLED VA panel. I think the fact that it's a quantum LED probably helps a lot with the fact that it has very well controlled backlight bleed. But the viewing angles of this monitor are actually quite undesirable. Um, if you're sitting in the center, no problem at all. If it's a setup that's really just built for one person and one person alone, the colors look fine, they look excellent from any sort of your standard viewing angles. However, if someone was standing on beside you, sitting behind you, and they were looking at the monitor like off angle, off the main, say 60 degrees in the middle of viewing angle, you're gonna end up realizing that there are some significant losses in contrast and some slight color shift as you look at this screen off angle. So whether that is a problem, that really depends on what kind of setup you're going for. If it's a setup that you're planning to have a lot of people sit around and watch a movie together, A, you shouldn't be getting a curved display for that, and B, uh, this is definitely not the display for that because of those problematic viewing angles. But if it's just a setup where it's you set in front of the monitor alone looking at whatever game you're playing or looking at whatever work you're doing and you don't have to show your monitor to someone else and no one else is going to come up behind you in the office and look at your work and go like, oh, what's that on the screen? And the viewing angles are perfectly acceptable 
and you're going to be fine. It's not going to affect you at all. So it really depends on what you're going to be using it and what's kind of the use case and use scenario that this monitor is going to be used in as to whether these viewing angle problems will affect you. For me, no problem at all because I don't really have, I have friends over. I don't have friends uh, and no one's ever in my room except me looking at my own screen in my own personal world. That's a bit depressing, I know, but whatever. So I guess it's conclusion time then. And who is this monitor for? And is this worth it for you? I think for $700, you get a lot of bang for your buck. There's a lot of features here to be had, very high performance monitor for the money. And you have to remember that this monitor does come with a stand that is actually very, very usable with plenty of ergonomic adjustments, which means if you buy this monitor, you don't have to spend extra money on a wall mounts monitor arm or a desk mount monitor arm, uh, which is cost savings that you definitely have to factor into your purchase decision. And that really helps with the value bang for your buck and a factor with this monitor. I think this monitor is gonna be perfect for the casual gamer looking for a fun, awesome, immersive experience because the 144 hertz variable refresh rate, wonderful ultra wide uh, and curved nature of this monitor is gonna be great for those kind of gaming experiences. It's also gonna be really good for a professional who wants an ultra wide display that's also really good for gaming so that they can do work with a screen that's nice and big with plenty of real estate in the day. And then at night when it's time to not out a couple of fun battlefield sessions with the boys load it up and have a good time because it's still a very versatile capable gaming monitor that's also very good for doing work and stuff like that who is this monitor not for then definitely it's not for competitive gamers trying to get to the ultimate echelon of human performance if you're trying to be the next simple go and get a 240 hertz tn panel enough said just get the most powerful high performance monitor you can this monitor is not built for those sweaty competitive tryhard gamers and if you're those kind of people Look else. And for people who are doing professional color grading, uh, I would recommend that you A, learn how to color grade using scopes because you probably can't get a really good color grading monitor in a reasonable price bracket that is affordable for most people. And B, if you are looking for a monitor that's both good for gaming and good for color grading and reasonably priced, dream on because those don't exist, at least not yet. So either get a monitor that's really good for color grading and then maybe sacrifice some gaming performance or get a monitor like this that's really great for gaming and sacrifice a bunch of your color grading performance. Then at that point, it's like up to you. What are your priorities? What's more important to you as a consumer? And then you just have to decide and shop accordingly. And with that, I end off this video. This video has taken me about 55 bajillion takes to make. My voice has gone hoarse shooting this video because monitor reviews are really hard, they're very complicated, and I'll try to be as extensive as possible with them. So if you appreciated the effort when you did this video or you found it helpful or enjoyable, please like and subscribe and comment and all that good stuff because that will help this video do well. And if this video does well, then I can continue to make even more videos that help you even more. You, you get the whole gist. Also, follow me on Instagram and join my Discord if you want if any questions you want to ask. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.